So hello everyone, I'm Iman Shivasan from Department of Mechanical Engineering, and I'm here to discuss with you on the subject non-destructive evaluation and testing. The subject code is MA419, unit number four in the series, section number 29. And today's topic are acoustic emission testing equipment, acoustic emission source location techniques, and acoustic emission uh, signal features. So, learning objective for today are to provide the students with a basic understanding of acoustic emission testing equipment, acoustic emission signal features and to know about the concept of acoustic emission source, location, techniques and our learning outcome will be the students will have an understanding of acoustic emission testing equipment, acoustic emission signal features and students will understand the concept of acoustic emission source, location, techniques. So let's start with this. So first of all, let's discuss about a very common topic called attenuation. Okay. And Acoustic uh, emission testing. We have also come across this word in our previous lecture also. Attenuation. So the intensity of the uh, acoustic emission signal uh, detected by a sensor is considerably lower than the intensity that would have been observed in close proximity of the source. Okay. So this is due to the attenuation. Okay. Now there are three main causes of attenuation, beginning with geometric spreading as an acoustic emission spreads from its source in a plate like material its amplitude decays by 30 percent okay its amplitude decays by 30 percent every time it doubles its distance from the source so in a three-dimensional structure the signal decays on the order of 50 percent this can be traced back to the simple conservation of energy another cause of attenuation is material damping as alluded to in our previous slide, also that I have told you. Now, when a while an uh, acoustic emission wave passes through a material, its elastic and kinetic energies are absorbed and converted into heat. So, the third cause of attenuation is wave scattering. So, geometric discontinuities like uh, twin boundaries, non metallic intrusions, wind boundaries, and structural boundaries both reflect some of the wave energy that was initially transmitted. So measurements of the effects of attenuation on an acoustic emission signal, this can be performed with a simple apparatus known as Nielsen source. You can see this consists of a mechanical pencil with either 0.3 or 0.5 mm, 2 H lead that has passed through a cone-shaped Teflon shoe designed to place the lead in contact with the surface of a material at a 30 degree angle. Okay, this, this is just a specification how the Experiment is done. Okay. Now, when the pencil lead is pressed and broke coming from the material, it creates a small local deformation that is relieved in the form of a stress wave. Now, similar to the type of an acoustic emission signal produced by a crack. Okay, you can see that how it is comparing. Okay, like the type of acoustic emission signal produced by a crack. By using this method, simulated acoustic emission sources can be created at various sites on a structure to determine the optimal position for the placement of sensors and to ensure that all areas of interest are within the detection range of the sensors, all sensors. Okay. Now, let's go with the wave mode and velocity. Okay. So, using acoustic emission inspection in conjunction with other non-destructive evaluation techniques can be an effective method in gauging the location and nature of the defects okay now you are going for the location and the nature of the defects so since those locations are determined by the time required for the wave to travel through the material to the sensor okay it is important that the velocity of the propagating waves be accurately calculated okay they say that you can say if the source locations are determined by the time travel for the wave to travel through a material to a sensor, okay, to a sensor, it is important that the velocity of the propagating waves be accurately calculated. So this is not an easy task since wave propagation it depends on the material in question and the wave mode being detected. So like for many applications, lamp waves are of primary concern. What kind of waves? Lamp waves. For many applications, lamp waves are of primary concern, whose distance uh, from uh, a sensor is larger than the thickness of the wave. Okay. From the sensor is larger than the thickness of the material. 
for additional information on lamp waves, you can see wave mode feed in the ultrasonic inspection that we have discussed in the previous also about ultrasonic inspection in this. Now, uh, equipment, uh, acoustic emission testing can be performed in the field with portable instruments or in a stationary laboratory setting. Okay, so typically systems contain a sensor, preemptifier, a filter, and amplifier along with measurements and display and storage equipment like oscilloscope and voltmeters and personal computers. Okay. Now acoustic emission sensors will respond to dynamic motion that is caused by an acoustic emission event. This is achieved through transducers which convert mechanical movement into an electrical voltage signal. What they say, the acoustic emission sensors they respond to dynamic motion that is caused by an acoustic emission event. And this is achieved to transducers which convert mechanical movement into electrical voltage signals. Okay, so the transducer element in uh, acoustic emission sensor is almost always a piezoelectric crystal. It is commonly made from a ceramic such as lead zirconate titanium. PZ lead zirconate titanium. You can see in the diagram also you have this natural material and we have a sample is shown. Okay, you can go with that. So the transducers are selected based on the operating frequency, the sensitivity, and the environment and are grouped into two classes like resonant and broadband. Okay, you have discussed in this slide, previous slide, that the transducer is very important because it is a very basic element of this setup. So they are now they are saying that the these transducers are selected based on the uh, operating frequency or sensitivity or environmental characteristics and then they are classified or grouped into two classes that resonant and broadband. So the majority of acoustic emission equipment is responsive to movement in its typical operating frequency at a range of uh, 30 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. Okay. So for materials with high attenuation like for plastic composites, okay, lower frequency may be used. Okay, lower frequencies may be used to distinguish acoustic emission signal and the opposite holds true as well. Okay, the opposite also holds at well. Now, ideally, the acoustic emission signal that reaches the maintenance will be free of background noise and the electromagnetic interference and Unfortunately, this is not realistic. However, sensors and preamplifiers are designed to help eliminate unwanted signals. We have some arrangements to the sensors and preamplifiers which helps us to eliminate like unwanted signals. Okay, uh, the first the preamplifier boosts the voltage to gain to provide gain and cable drive uh, capability. Okay, if the preamplifier boosts the voltage and to provide the gain and cable drive capability and to minimize interference a preamplifier is placed close to the transducer in fact many transducers today are equipped with integrated preamplifiers now this is an advancement that many transducers they are today equipped with or pre with integrated preamplifier now next the signal okay the signal is related to a band pass filter for elimination of low frequencies okay like low frequency they are eliminating this common to background noise and high frequencies okay so following completion of this process that signals travel to the acoustic system mainframe and eventually to a computer or similar device for analysis and storage so depending on noise conditions for the filtering or amplification at the main frame may still be necessary. You can see a setup on the right hand side. Okay, we have this uh, computer system arranged. You can uh, call it as a main system mainframe. Okay, okay, so yeah, it is available for uh, you can say analysis and storage of all the uh, signals that we are getting. Okay, that signals that will 
uh, getting that it travels to the this mainframe system or you can say a house system a mainframe that is maybe a computer or a similar device that is used for analysis and storage okay so now this is given a diagram of a four uh, you can of a basis four channel acoustic emission testing system okay this is you can see the sensors at the you are starting from the left to right you go you can see that there are sensors and then there are pre amplifiers with filters and then you have main amplification uh, with filters main amplifiers with filters okay then you have measurement circuitry okay and after that you have data buffers and then disk storage uh, with the microcomputers and operating operate keyboard and then you have after this whole microprocessing process you microcomputer with the help of microcomputer you uh, have the screen display or you have a printer and graphic copy okay this is just an arrangement of a four channel acoustic emission testing system okay and how you can see that every element has its own role okay from sensors to screen display like with pre amplifiers with filters main amplifiers with filters so measurements circuitry or data buffers and everything every every micro, every microcomputer is there everything has its own role its importance in uh, making this successful okay so after passing the Acoustic emission system mainframe, the signal comes to a detection and as a measurement circuit that is shown in the figure. Okay, you can see on the right hand side that you know that the multiple measurement circuits can be used in uh, multiple sensors. Okay, multiple measurement circuits this can be used in multiple sensors, channel systems for source location purpose. So at the measurement circuitry, the shape of the conditioned signal is compared to the threshold voltage. That has been programmed by the operator. Now, the, what I'm saying that the shape of the conditional signal they are comparing with the threshold voltage that has been programmed by the operator. Now, signals are either continuous, that is analogous to Gaussian, random noise with amplitudes varying according to the magnitude of the acoustic emission events of burst type. Each time, each time the threshold voltage is exceeded. The measurement circuit releases a digital first. This is important. Each time the threshold voltage is increased, or you can say it's exceeded. Each time the threshold voltage is exceeded, the measurement circuit uh, releases a digital pulse. Okay. Now this is this threshold voltage. This is this value has been programmed by the operator. So when this the threshold voltage is exceeded, then the measurement circuit receives a digital pulse. Okay, so this is how the first pulse is used to signify the beginning of a hit. Okay, a hit is used to describe the acoustic uh, emission event that is detected by a particular sensor. So one acoustic emission event can cause a system with numerous channels to record multiple hits. So pulses will continue to be generated while the signal exceeds okay, the threshold voltage. The pulses will continue to be generated while the signal exceeds the threshold voltage. This is what they want. So once this process has stopped for a predetermined amount of time, the hit is finished. Okay, and what is this hit? This is used to describe the acoustic event that is detected by a particular sensor. Okay, now once this process has stopped for a predetermined amount of time, the hit is finished. So as far as the circuitry is concerned, the data from the hit is then read. What is that? The data that you are having, the data from the hit is then read into a microcomputer and the measurement circuitry is reset. Okay. Okay, so when they say that the pulses these continue to be generated while the signal exceeds the threshold voltage, and once this voltage is, has dropped for a predetermined amount of time, the hit is finished. So the data that is from the hit is then read to the microcomputer, and the measurement circuit is reset. Now, hit-driven acoustic emission systems and measurement for measurement of signal features. Now, although several acoustic emission systems these designs are available, okay, 
applied for mining various options like sensitivity and cost. Most acoustic emission systems use a head driven architecture. So the head driven design is able to identify is to efficiently measure all detected signals and record digital descriptions okay, for each individual features. Okay. So during periods of inactivity, the system lies dormant. So once a new signal is detected, the system records the hits or hits uh, and, are, and the data is logged for present and for future display. So also common to most acoustic system systems is the ability to perform routine tasks that are valuable for acoustic emission inspection. Now these tasks include quantitative signal measurement with corresponding time or load readings and discrimination between real and false signals like noise and uh, collection of statistical information about the parameters collection of statistical information about the parameters of these signals okay so this is measurement of signal features are important in this now the acoustic emission source location techniques see this is important this is important because the source location is very so important task in this okay so when you go with the multi-channel source location techniques they say that locating the source of uh, you can say of significant acoustic emission is often the main goal of the uh, inspection okay so although the magnitude of the damage may be unknown after acoustic emission analysis follow-up testing at source locations can provide these answers Okay, they say that see the main goal of inspection is obviously locating the source. Okay, so although the magnitude of the damage may be unknown after this analysis, then follow up testing at source locations can provide these answers. So, many acoustic emission systems are capable of using multiple sensors channels during testing, allowing them to report a hit. From a single acoustic emission event. Now, these acoustic emission systems, okay, these acoustic emission systems can be used to determine the location of an event source. Okay, now these are helping you, these systems are helping you determine the location of event source. As hits are recorded by each sensor, what they say. As hits are recorded by each sensor or channel, the source can be located by knowing the velocity of the wave in the material. Okay, velocity of the wave in the material and the difference in hit arrival times among the sensors. And the difference in hit arrival times among the sensors as measured by the hardware circuitry or computer software. Okay, now by properly spacing the sensors in this manner, it is possible to inspect the entire structure with relatively few sensors. Okay. Now, source location techniques assume that acoustic emission waves will travel at a constant velocity in a material. Okay. They travel at a constant velocity in a material. However, various effects that may alter the expected velocity of the acoustic emission wave, that is, deflections and multi wave moves. What they say? Like reflections and multi wave moves, and can affect the accuracy of this technique. Okay, we have we know that the various effects there, yeah, these alter the expected velocity of the acoustic emission waves. Okay, like reflections and multi and multiple wave modes, and it can affect the accuracy of this technique. Therefore, geometric effects of the structure being tested and the operating frequency of the acoustic emission system must be considered. When determining whether a particular source location technique is feasible for a given structure, for a given test. Okay. So we should check that also. Several source location techniques have been developed based on this method. So one of the commonly used computer source location techniques is the linear location principle shown in this video. So you can see this. Uh, simple uh, setup and this A source is there and then you have the midpoint and you can see the L by 2 portion is there 
and we have a value of x in between them. Okay, so difference in time of arrival. Yeah. So several location techniques have been developed based uh, based on this method. So one of the commonly used computer source location techniques is linear location principle. Okay, this linear location is often used to evaluate struts on truss bridges. So when a source is located at the midpoint, when the source is located at the midpoint, the time of arrival differences for the wave at the two sensor is zero. So you can see the midpoint in the diagram. So when the source is located at the midpoint, the source is located at the midpoint, the time of arrival differences for the two for the wave at the two sensor is zero. Okay. I repeat, you understand it. When the source is located at the midpoint, the time of arrival differences for the wave at the two sensor is zero. If the source is closer to one of the sensor, a difference in arrival time is measured. Okay, it is there. So to calculate the distance of the source location from the midpoint, the arrival time is multiplied by the wave velocity. Whether the location lies to the left or right of the midpoint is determined by which sensor reports the hit. Okay, the sensor is there. So, whether the location lies to the right or left of the midpoint is determined by which sensor. Okay, by which sensor, left one or right one, whichever, it first records the hit. This is a linear relationship and applies to any extent sources between the sensors. So because the above scenario implicitly assumes that the source is on a line passing through the two sensor, it is valid for a linear problem. What happens? It is valid for a linear problem. So when using acoustic emission to identify a source location in a planar material, three or more sensors are used. Okay. We say that when using acoustic emission to identify a source location, what? When using acoustic emission to identify a source location in a planar material, two, three, or more sensors are used, and the optimal position of the source is between the sensors. The two categories of source location analysis are used for this situation: zonal location and point location. Now let's go with the zonal location technique. So, as the name says, zonal location aims to trace the waves to a specific zone. Name says zonal. So they say that this the word so zonal zonal location aims to trace the waves to a specific zone or region around a sensor. So this method is used in anisotropic materials or in other structures where sensors are placed relatively far apart, and when material attenuation affects the quality of signals at multiple sensors. Okay, here what the sensors are placed relatively apart. Or when high material attenuation affects the this quality of signals at multiple sensors. You can see in the diagram also. There are various kind of on the upper diagram, there are various kinds of sensors. Like sensor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all, all are 7, all are placed apart. Okay, you can see them. Now zones can be of length, okay, uh, areas or volumes depending on the dimensions of the array. A planar sensor array with detection or by one sensor is shown in the upper right figure. The source can be assumed to be within the region and less than the halfway between sensors. So you can see that how they have defined the region, the zones for every sensor. Okay. Now when additional sensors are applied, <coughs> arrival times and amplitudes help pinpoint the source. The ordered pair in Lower right, you can see figure. You can see in the uh, there's the two sensors detecting the signal in the zone and the order of signal arriving at each sensor. <coughs> so when relating signal strength to peak amplitude, the largest peak amplitude is pre-assumed to come from the nearest sensor, the second largest from the next closest sensor, and so forth. Okay, <coughs> the largest peak amplitude is assumed to come from the nearest sensor. Second address from the next closest sensor, and then they go accordingly. <coughs> so point location. Now the point location is here. So you can see that in the diagram also it is shown that there is a source. Okay. 
and then you have the sensors at different different radius like r1 is at sensor 1 and r2 is for sensor 2 r3 is for sensor 3 okay <clears throat> here also in the diagram you can see the source and then you have different different sensors okay so in order to point location to be justified signals must be detected in a minimum number of sensors so two for linear and three for planar okay uh, and four for volumetric so they are using signals so they say that in order to find the point location to be justified the signals must be the signals these are must be detected in a minimum number of sensors like two for linear three for planar four for volumetric so arrival so accurate arrival times must also be available what accurate arrival times must also be available arrival times are often found by using peak amplitude or the first thresholding function so the velocity of the wave propagation and the exact position of the sensors are necessary criteria as well equation can then be derived using sensor array geometry or more complex algebra to locate more specified points of interest normally the microcomputer is there to have to do all such calculations of equations okay so now ai signal features that is acoustic emission signal features this is also very important now with the equipment configured and set up complete acoustic emission testing may be now the sensor is coupled to the test surface and held in place with tape or adhesive okay an operator then monitors the signal which are then excited by the induced stresses in the object right now when a useful transient or burst signal is correctly obtained parameters like amplitude counts measured area another rectified signal envelope that is called mars duration rise time these can be gathered okay now each of the acoustic emission signal features shown in the images you can see in the diagram also the you can see the duration is shown at the bottom with the help of arrows then you have threshold crossing pulses out you have a comparator circuit okay in which you can see the a signal is coming threshold is coming okay and on the top side if you see that you can see that there is a graph of time and volts okay time versus volts and then you see that there is a rise time shown how the count is shown how many counts are there like 1 2 3 4 is there then marc that that is called measured area under the rectified signal envelope that is shown is there then this threshold is shown okay the amplitude of the signal is there with you okay so in this way there are certain these terms are there these parameters are there with you that needs to be discussed okay so let's go with them now the amplitude one of the important feature amplitude a it is the greatest measured voltage in a waveform and is measured in decibels okay now this is an important parameter in acoustic emission inspection because it determines the detectability of the signal what determines the detectability of the signal signals with amplitudes below the operator defined minimum threshold will not be recorded okay so you see the amplitude below the operator defined minimum threshold will not be recorded now rise time see you can see the amplitude in the you can see in the, in the diagram also you can see the it is showing the range okay so it is measured in decibels and important thing is that signals with amplitudes below the operator defined and minimum threshold will not be recorded so take care of this thing. now rise time that is given by r capital r it is the time interval between the first threshold crossing and the signal peak you can see the rise time in the diagram also on the right hand side okay the parameter is the parameter this parameter is related to the propagation of the wave what this parameter is related to the propagation of the wave between the source of the acoustic emission event and the sensor so therefore rise time is used uh, for qualification or sorry qualification of signals and as a criterion for noise filter okay now we go with the duration you can see the word duration on the right hand side okay uh, it is uh, at the bottom of the diagram you can see 
it is shown by a capital D. So it is a time difference between the first and the last. You can see the horizontal axis is shown by time. Okay. So it is duration is the time difference between the first and the last threshold crossings. So duration can be used to identify different types of sources and to filter out noise. Okay, it can be used to identify different types of sources. This duration is very important because it can be used to identify different types of sources and to filter out noise. Like count, capital N, this parameter relies upon the magnitude of the signal and the acoustics of the material. Now, the very important thing, MARC. That is shown by capital E. You can see in the diagram also it is written MARC. It is denoted by capital E, sometimes referred to as energy counts and is, is the measure of the area under the envelope of the rectified linear voltage time signal from the SRG. So this can be thought of as an relative signal amplitude and is useful because the energy of the emission can be determined. Now, MARSC is also sensitive to the duration and the amplitude of the signal. It is sensitive to duration and the amplitude of the signal, but does not use count or user defined thresholds and operative frequencies. This is a very important property that MARSC is sensitive to duration and amplitude of the signal, but does not use counts and or user defined thresholds and operating frequencies. So MARSC is measurement. What this MARSC is regularly used in the measurements of acoustic emissions for a uh, acoustic emission it is used so it is MRC regularly used in the measurement of acoustic emissions very important for us now counts that is capital N it refers to the amount of pulses emitted by the measurement circuitry if the signal amplitude is greater than the threshold okay you can see the counts in the diagram also so it is called as the number of pulses emitted by the measurement circuitry if the signal amplitude is greater than the threshold. So depending on the magnitude of the acoustic emission event and the characteristics of the material, one hit may produce one or many counts. One hit may produce one or many counts. So while this is a relatively simple parameter to collect, it usually needs to be combined with amplitude or duration measurement or or duration management to provide signal information about the shape of the signal okay what it do it combines with amplitude or duration measurements to provide quality information about the shape of the signal in this way this parameter is uh, used okay how comes the important thing after these parameters we have read about all the parameters that is count or marsc pressure Rise time, amplitude, duration. Okay, so let's go with the next topic that is AE Barkerson technique. Okay, so we'll discuss about Barkerson effect. So, the Barkerson effect refer, uh, refers to the sudden change in the size of ferromagnetic domains that occur during magnetization or demagnetization. So, during magnetization, favorable or favorably oriented domains develop at the cost of less favorably oriented domains. What happens in this? Favorably during magnetization, favorably oriented domains. What? Favorably oriented. Okay, when you are going with this magnetization or demagnetization, so they said during magnetization, favorably oriented domains develop at the cost of less favorable oriented domains. Now these two factors result in minute jumps of magnetization when a ferromagnetic sample like iron is exposed to an increasing magnetic field. We can see in the figure, this is diagram. This uh, diagram is having between uh, field strength, magnetizing field strength, capital H, on the horizontal axis, and magnetic flux density, that is capital B, on the vertical axis. So you can see that how the is is shown in a zoom view. So they say that the domain wall motion itself is determined by many factors like. Microstructure, grain boundaries, inclusions, okay, inclusions and stress and strain. So, by some token, the Barkerson effect is to a function of stress and strain. So, let's think about Barkerson noise. The Barkerson noise can be heard if a coil of wire is wrapped around a 
sample undergoing magnetization. Abrupt movements in the magnetic field produce spiking current pulses in the coil. So when amplified, the clicks can be compared to rice clicks or the crumbling of a candy wrapper. So the amount of barkers and noise is influenced by the material intersections and dislocations and is likewise dependent on the mechanical properties of the material. So currently, materials exposed to high energy particles like nuclear reactors or cyclic mechanical stresses like pipelines are available often for non-destructive evaluation. Okay, these materials are, these are available for non-destructive evaluation using barcos and noise. Okay. So applications, they say that acoustic emission is very versatile, non-invasive way of to gather information about the material or structure. Now, acoustic emission testing can be applied to inspect, okay, what it can be used to, it can be applied to inspect and monitor pipelines or pressure vessels and storage tanks, bridges, aircrafts, bucket trucks, fast bucket trucks and a variety of composite and ceramic components. Okay. So it is also used in process control applications such as monitoring, welding processes. Okay. So a few of the examples that we will discuss about uh, application of, you can say, uh, caustic emission testing. So one is the weld monitoring. Okay. See, weld monitoring or weld testing has also been discussed previously as using ultrasonic testing or radiography. So here also this is important. You can monitor the weld or the weldments easily through acoustic emission testing. So during the welding process, the temperature changes induce stresses between the weld and the base metal. What to do? In the welding process, the temperature changes induce stresses between the weld and the base metal. So these stresses are often relieved by heat treating the weld. Okay. However, in some cases, the tempering the weld is not possible and minor cracking occurs. So amazingly, cracking can continue for up to 10 days after the weld has been completed. So using stainless steel welds with known inclusions and accelerometers for detecting purposes and background monitoring, it was found that low level signals and more sizable bursts were related to the growth of micro fissures and larger cracks repeatedly. Okay, so the standard of AS, ASTM E74996 is a standard practice of acoustic emission monitoring of continuous welding. And they say it has made it a standard practice of acoustic emission monitoring of continuous welding. So this is something really good. Now bucket truck like cherry pickers with integrity evaluation. Okay, you can see in the diagram also. So accident uh, overloads fatigues can all occur when uh, operating bucket trucks or uh, other aerial systems. So if a mechanical or structural defect is ignored, a serious injury can result. Okay. So testing by independent labs and electrical utility is followed and although originally intended to examine only the boom section, the method is now used for inspecting the pedestal pins and weighted other components. So they say that normally the our, our caustic emission tests are second in a chain of inspections which start with a visual check. So if necessary, follow-up test takes in the form of magnetic particle, dipenetrant or ultrasonic inspection. Okay, we have these available with you, but they, they say that they they you go with the visual checks also. Now an experienced personnel can perform five or ten tests per day, saving valuable time and money along the way. So we say that ASTM. F914 governs the procedures for examining the insulated aerial personal devices. Now, gas trailer tubes. Okay, so this is also a very important application. So the acoustic emission testing are on pressurized jumbo tube trailers. What? Acoustic emission testing on pressurized jumbo tube trailers was authorized by the Department of Transportation in some year 1983. So instead of using hydrostatic testing. Uh, where tubes must be removed from the service and disassembled, AT allows for in safety testing. So a 10% overpressurization is performed at a normal filling station with acoustic emission sensors attached to the tubes at each end. So a multi-channel uh, acoustic emission system uh, is used to detection and map source location. What do you do? A multi-channel acoustic system is used to detection and map sense map source locations. The suspect locations are further evaluated using ultrasound or ultrasonic inspections 
and when defects are confirmed, the tube is removed from this. Okay, so they said a multi-channel account system. Okay, multi-channel account system is used to detection and mapped source locations. Okay, so AET, the acoustic emission testing, can detect subcritical flaws. There is hydrostatic testing cannot detect the cracks until they cause rupture of the tube. So because of high stress in the circumferential direction of the tubes, the tests are geared towards finding longitudinal fatigue cracks. Okay. Now the bridges. You can see the diagram on the right hand side. The bridges contain many vents, joints or a connection and a combination of load and environmental factors heavily influence damage mechanisms such as fatigue cracking, metal thinning due to corrosion. The bridges receive visual inspection about every two years. Okay. And when damage is detected, the bridge is either bridge is either shut down, uh, its weight capacity is lowered, or it is singled out for more frequency monitoring, or for more frequent monitoring. So in this way, see, suppose if in inspection some problem is there, so you either we shut down the bridge, or we reduce the weight capacity, or it is singled out for more frequent monitoring. The cost of emission is increasingly used for bridge monitoring applications because it can continuously gather data. And detect changes that may be due to the damage without requiring lane closures or bridge shutdown. Okay, so it is here uh, acoustic emission testing is helpful. Okay, for bridge for bridge monitoring. Okay, in fact, traffic flow is commonly used to load or stress the bridge for the acoustic emission testing. Now, aerospace structures. Okay, now this is also you can see in the diagram on the right hand side how it is helpful. Now the most uh, aerospace structures consist of complex assemblies of components that have been designed to carry significant loads. Okay, to carry what? Very significant loads of while being as light as possible. So this combination of frequent leads to many parts that can tolerate only a minor amount of damage without failing. Before failing, sorry, before failing. So this fact makes detection of damage extremely important but components are often packed tightly together making access for accessor inspections difficult. So acoustic emission testing has found applications in monitoring the health of aerospace structures because sensors can be attached in easily accessed areas that are remotely located from damage prone sites. So acoustic emission testing has used laboratory structural test as well as in the flight test application. Okay. So in this way acoustic emission testing is very useful in Aerospace structures also. Okay. Now other uses, other applications like uh, okay, other applications are like fiber reinforced poly polymer matrix composites in particular, and glass fiber reinforced structure or structures, uh, reinforced parts or structures like fan blades and material research. Okay, you can have it inspection and quality assurance, uh, real time leakage test and location within various components. Okay, right, like for tanks. Okay, so you can have real time. Leakage test okay, and location within various components, then the rail tank, railroad tank car, rocket motor testing, detection location of high voltage partial discharges in transformers. So, there are various uh, applications for them, okay, for acoustic emission testing, which is good, which is good, okay. So, uh, let's start with the MCQs now because uh, we should go with them. MCQs for today are. Let's start it. So, uh, in acoustic emission testing, the intensity of AE signal detected by a sensor is considerably lower than the dense intensity that would have been observed in close proximity of the source. So, this is due to the attenuation. I repeat, you understand it, okay? In acoustic emission testing, the intensity of an acoustic emission signal detected by a sensor is considerably lower than the intensity that would have been observed in the Close proximity of the source. This is due to attenuation. It's true. It's true. We just discussed in the starting. It's true. So, in, a, in acoustic emission testing, I mean, uh, acoustic emission sensors are respond to dynamic motion that is caused by the acoustic emission event. So this is achieved through transducers which convert. Okay, what do these transducers this convert mechanical movement into an electrical voltage signal? I repeat, understand it. Acoustic emission sensors respond to dynamic motion that is caused by an acoustic emission event. Now, this is achieved through transducers which convert mechanical movement into electrical voltage signal. It's true. 
these transducers help and convert this okay what they convert mechanical movement into electrical voltage signal so this is true the rule of transducer is true this convert mechanical movement into electrical voltage signal transducer is true so in acoustic emission testing the transducer element in an acoustic emission sensor is almost always a piezoelectric system which is commonly made from a ceramic such as lead zirconate titanate which is true now in acoustic emission testing source locations techniques assumes that acoustic emission waves what to say source location techniques assumes that acoustic emission waves travel at a constant velocity in a material however various effects may alter the affected velocity uh, inspect as uh, expected velocity of the acoustic emission waves and can affect the accuracy of this technique obviously it's true yes a is the answer Now, in acoustic emission testing, uh, amplitude A is the greatest measured voltage in the waveform as measured in decibels, and this is an important parameter. This is an important parameter in acoustic emission inspection because it determines the detectability of the signal. True. Ah, that's the answer is A. And then in acoustic emission testing, the rise time, capital R, is the time interval between the first threshold crossing and the signal peak. So this parameter, this parameter that we are discussing. The rise time is related to the propagation of the wave between the source of the emission of the acoustic emission event and the sensor. So, therefore, rise time is used for quantity qualification of signals and as a criterion for noise filter. Now, you uh, understand this about rise time. You can see that in the acoustic emission testing, rise time is the time interval between the first threshold crossing and the signal peak. I have shown you in the diagram previously there. Okay. Now this parameter is related to the propagation of the wave between the source to the acoustic emission event and the sensor. So therefore, rise time is used for qualification of signal. What they do for qualification of signal and a criterion for, as for noise filter. This is true. Now acoustic emission testing duration D uh, is the time uh, difference between the first and the last threshold crossing. Duration can be used to identify different types of sources and to filter out noise. So, like counts, this parameter, like counts, capital M, this, this parameter relies upon the magnitude of the signal and the key of a structure of the material. So, it is true. Okay, the answer is true. This is this is true about duration. Okay, so answer is A. Now, MARSC is sometimes referred to as energy counts and is the measure of the area under an envelope of electrified linear voltage. Okay, you can say the MARSC, FLE, sometimes referred to as energy counts and it is the measure of the area under the envelope of the rectified linear voltage time signal from the transducer. So this can be thought as of relative signal amplitude and is useful. Uh, okay, it is useful because the energy of the emission can be determined. So true is the answer. Ah, uh, in acoustic emission testing, counts n, capital N, it refers to the number of pulse emitted by the measurement circuitry if the signal amplitude is greater than the threshold. I've shown you the diagrams in the slides also. So depending on the magnitude of the acoustic emission event and the characteristics of the material, one hit may produce one or more many counts. So it is true in this case. Okay. Okay. Because one hit may produce one or many counts. So it is true. Now, in thermographic inspections, it refers to the non-destructive testing of machine or parts. Sorry, uh, testing of parts, materials, or systems through the imaging of thermal patterns at the object surface. Okay, so this thermographic inspection we have discussed in the lab that it refers to the non-destructive testing of parts, materials, or systems through the imaging of the pattern, thermal patterns at the object's uh, surface. So it is true in this case. Answer is A. Okay, so we have studied about this all these MCQs. You can know, uh, understand that this was also true. So these are the references which you can refer and increase your knowledge in these topics because this will be helpful to you and hope you learn something good in this.